And that's why it's always best to understand these things, not just jump into it, but all these SARMs companies are selling you these things without telling you. What is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elon Muscular and in this video we're going to be looking at a very important study. I want to dive further into the study that I mentioned in my my experience video about my six week cycle with LGD 4033. The reason that I want to do this is because this is a very important cycle for understanding SARMs and I want to walk you through it and explain every single thing that happened during the study and how can you how you can use this research and extrapolate it to your SARM cycles and have better design to have better health and better results over the long term, not just the short term. So this is one of the first studies that was done on LGD, which is a very powerful SARM and they studied how much muscle it helps people put on, the side effects of it, and even whether or not you need to PCT from it and how your testosterone levels are affected during the cycle and after the cycle. So it's like super important research for somebody who's a bodybuilder because we wanna make sure that our testosterone levels stay healthy and bounce back quickly and so that we don't have to suppress them or shut them down too much. Now, over time, SARMs have been marketed as something that doesn't really shut you down and it's easier to recover from than anabolic steroids. And this study really gives us an insight into that. So let's jump right into it and we'll check it out. So the first graph here shows us how much muscle the people that took LGD put on. Now I want you to understand, these are not athletes, these are not people who've been training for five years, these are not people who've taken SARMs before, so they will have these hyper level of newbie gains. They're gonna be putting on way more muscle than you probably will be, unless you're like just some random guy who's never worked out before and suddenly goes into the gym and suddenly starts taking LGD at the same time. So understand that these results are gonna be a little bit inflated, but they're still extremely impressive. And the dosages that they used were very low. So the dosages that are typically recommended in the bodybuilding community for taking LGD are five milligrams or 10 milligrams. I've even heard of some people going as high as 20 milligrams, which in my opinion is crazy. In my cycle, I took five milligrams, but in this study, they used dosages of 0.1 milligrams. That would be 50 times less than five milligrams. 0.3 milligrams and one milligram. So very conservative dosages that I've never heard of anybody that's a bodybuilder taking dosages this low, but maybe we should consider it based on this research. So here we can see that the group that took 0.1 milligrams did grow more muscle than placebo, and they took up about you know 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilograms on average, and then this bar will be the absolute high end. So here we can see also a good genetic variability. You know, genetics is something that always comes into bodybuilding, and here we can clearly see some people put on way more muscle than other people when LGD was in introduced to the equation. So that's the 0.1 milligram group. The 0.3 milligram group gained over one kilogram on the high end and 0.5 around the middle. And then the one milligram group took about 1.5 uh, grams, uh, kilograms of muscle on the high end and one kilogram ish, 1.1 kilograms on average. So that is a lot of muscle to put on in 21 days. I mean, think about that. We, some of us, you know, especially if you're natural and have been training for a long time, can train an entire year just to put on one kilogram. So we can really see how powerful this stuff can be. Now, the next graph is extremely interesting and shows us free testosterone levels and how they went down in a dose dependent manner. So follow me here because this is gonna be very important. So basically these people were natural, right? They weren't taking TRT, they weren't taking anything before they went into this LGD cycle and their free testosterone levels all went down and they went down dose dependently. So the more that they took, the more their testosterone level went down. And we can see here in the one milligram group that they had a reduction of their free testosterone of about five nanograms per deciliter. Now that's a lot. I'm not saying that it shut them down and tanked them down to zero, but this is definitely enough to notice it, to feel less energy, to feel less strong erections, to feel the side effects of having much lower testosterone than you came in with. So if the one milligram group is experiencing this, think about what you might be experiencing taking five milligrams. Like me, I took five milligrams at 19 years old and had erectile dysfunction, 10 milligrams, 
or some people are even stacking, you know, 10 milligrams of LGD with 30 milligrams of Rad140, which also has all of these same effects. So think about it. If you take enough, you will shut down your testosterone levels completely. Although if you just take a little bit, you might just suppress them. Now let's see how people bounced back. And these people, they did not take Clomid, they didn't take Nolvidex, HCG, they didn't take uh, PCT Booster from your favorite supplement company. They just chilled. They stopped using it at day 21. So this is where they stopped using it. Everybody stopped. And then their testosterone levels went back to normal and they monitored them for 35 days afterwards up to day 56. So by day 56, everyone's testosterone levels were pretty much back to normal. Some were still getting there. And even one of the groups had a boost in testosterone, so maybe a little bit of a rebound effect. But generally, if you average this out, by a month after they finished, their testosterone levels were pretty much back to normal on these conservative dosages. So let's say that you want to reach your natural limit faster, right? There's no way that a natural athlete can put on 1.5 kilograms in 21 days. So maybe a way to do it that could be not so dumb would be to take a milligram of LGD, put on this muscle and then while you are waiting for your testosterone levels to come back, which takes time, you want to make sure that you're training and dieting and still putting in 100% so that maybe you're not putting on as much muscle, but you can at least maintain what you built. And overall, you will, through good, consistent, solid effort, put on muscle faster than somebody that would be natural. Now, that would be the smartest way to do it. That is how I did it. But what a lot of people do, which is completely stupid, is they do their SARM cycle. And while they're on the SARMs, they have a big boost. You know, they have this big boost in performance, energy, and everything when it comes to the gym. But then their testosterone levels goes down, goes down, goes down. And after, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, whenever their cycle ends, their testosterone level is in the dumps, which means they lack the motivation because we know testosterone helps increase motivation helps increase your aggressiveness you know it's going to get you into the gym it's going to get you working hard but these people that don't have the mental toughness to push through that even with low testosterone will take the SARM cycle and then after the SARM cycle when they have low testosterone stop sticking to a diet stop training now they have low testosterone they're not training and they're not eating properly and they might even put on fat and lose muscle and end up in a worse spot by day 56 than had they never even touched it. So that's why I don't recommend SARMs for somebody who's natural, who doesn't have that TRT base, because it's gonna have this up and down effect. And if you know how to manage that, if you know how to prepare for that, if you plan for that, then you can get through that. But if you didn't, then you could have a lot of different things go wrong. And that's why it's always best to understand these things, not just jump into it, but all these SARMs companies are selling you these things without telling you about the research, without telling you about the side effects, pretending like there's gonna be no repercussions. And that is a disservice to your health and it's also a disservice to your gains, which is you know the worst thing of all in, in, on this channel, right? So the next thing we're looking at is prostate specific antigen. So basically, is this affecting the prostate? And the good news is they didn't really find any negative effects. So LGD did not affect the prostate, which is good. Why are we even looking at the prostate? Why do we even care about the prostate? Because you know these SARMs, they were made to be selective. So ideally, they're only selecting the tissues that help you build muscle, and they're not stimulating the tissues like the prostate that could also be stimulated by things like you know testosterone, estrogen, DHTs, and different steroids that you're taking. So we're trying to isolate the variables. So they wanted to test, is the prostate being affected negatively? And they didn't find really any negative correlations there. So that is really good news for SARMs. Now, the next thing that we're looking at is cholesterol. So we know that when testosterone increases, right, and these SARMs should be more selective than that, so hopefully you have less side effects. We know when you increase your testosterone from you know, natural to 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, it has a negative uh, correlation with your good cholesterol and it makes your bad cholesterol increase. So your good cholesterol goes down, your bad cholesterol goes up. And this is really bad because it increases your chance of heart disease, a plaque buildup in your arteries, and basically puts you down a path for atherosclerosis and a heart attack down the line. This is the number one killer of Americans, so we don't want that, especially because we're eating a high protein diet, we're eating a lot of meat, and with that we get a lot of you know saturated fat and all this other stuff. We might be taking in some 
some sugar with our post-workout shakes and just doing all these things to skew our cholesterol in a negative manner. And we don't want to give ourselves a heart attack, which a lot of bodybuilders die from. So ideally we want to take things and live in a manner that's not going to affect our cholesterol levels. And this is something that really can't be avoided when you're performance enhancing, but hopefully these SARMs are a solution to that. But what we see in this study sadly is that that is not really the case. Good cholesterol went down, bad cholesterol went up, and overall we did not have a positive effect on cholesterol levels and we pretty much had the same stuff as if you took anything else, Anivar or any other oral steroid or injectable steroid, they all have this negative effect on cholesterol levels, which is not good. So what do we have to conclude here? I will read the conclusion out because they said it better than I can. Not only the cardiovascular effects, so the effects on the cholesterol, but also the reduction of endogenous production, uh, but also the reduction of endogenous production of testosterone means that the researchers are not entirely convinced of the long-term effects of LGD. Short-term indications for grievous conditions such as cancer, kachichia, or functional limitations following an acute illness or hip fracture. So basically what they're saying is that short-term, it's okay, it can help you put on muscle. And it might decrease your testosterone levels, but they'll probably come back to normal. Long term, not really a good idea because it'll fuck up your cholesterol, it'll fuck up your testosterone levels the more you take them. So this is why you know you have to take these SARMs with a grain of salt. They are not tested for long term. They're not made for long term like testosterone replacement therapy would, you know, with 20 year studies. They'll put on muscle when you take them, but if you repeatedly take them over and over again, like you do a six week cycle of SARMs and six weeks off, six, six weeks cycle of SARMs, six weeks off, eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna ruin your natural testosterone production, you're gonna hurt your cholesterol, and you're also gonna hurt your liver, which we've seen in other studies, and we other tissues in the body as well. The research is always coming out, so, Ultimately, these SARMs, they're not that much more selective than anabolic steroids, but they're just easier to get a hold of and they're able to be freely marketed, which is why you think they're safer because people say that they're safer. But really, uh, what's really the difference between taking LGD and taking an oral steroid, which is legal, Anivar, right? Which is used for burn patients and rehabilitation that has almost the same effects in terms of putting on muscle and almost the same side effects in terms of cholesterol and lowering your testosterone production. So overall, when you think about LGD, you can think about it just, it's just like another oral steroid. There's nothing special about it just because it's been grouped into the SARMs category. They're not as selective as we hope that they would be. It sucks but this is the research. Hope you guys learned something. If you liked the video, like the video, comment on the video, share the video, and check out Shredded Secrets of Fitness Influencers if you really wanna know everything that goes into the equation of building an awesome physique this summer. And hit me up for coaching at elonmuscular.com. Thanks so much, guys. Peace.